Kel Richards, Sky News contributor Evelyn Ray, Liberal Senator Holly Hughes and contributor Joe Hildebrand. Welcome all. Love to be here. <laughs> Let's start with a growing speculation of a May election. The budget has been set for March in the 2025 sitting calendar, but Labor MP Tim Ayres tried to bat away suggestions this points to a May election on Sky News this morning. There's been some pretty feverish uh, speculation about this because we released the parliamentary calendar uh, in October. Now, that, that is something that we've said that we want to do, is, is bring out the parliamentary calendars early. That's a good thing. Gives people a bit of uh, clarity about next year. It, it adds nothing to what right. the Prime Minister or the government said about election time. Joe, it's been reported Labor is planning to take childcare and Medicare yeah. reforms to the election. Are these vote winners, do you think? And what do you make about the I, date I, I, well, I, well, obviously, anything that Labor says now that it's going to take to the election is probably not what it's going to take to the election. Like, we'll take that. Of course, there will be something about childcare and something about Medicare, but you can pretty much figure out what the government's position is on both of those things because they're foundational Labor policies in and of themselves. So uh, I don't think that's particularly surprising. Um, but I do think, I've said all along, that, that they will go the distance, that they will go, Albo told me himself, and I put it on the front page of the Telegraph, so I hope I'm right, otherwise I look pretty stupid. And it's the, only, it's the only option that makes sense because the biggest policy they're going to want to take to the election or the biggest um, announceable that we're going to want to take to the election is that interest rates are going down yep. and there are more interest rate cuts to come. And the odds of that happening are highest the further forward you go in time. So they will want to call the election as late as possible. So that is the main thing. Um, I, do, I, I do suspect there will be some stuff on education, um, which this article alluded to, although I think it will probably go beyond childcare and early, early learning education. But, um, but maybe we'll finally get universal mm -hmm. preschools. He's sort of flagged that anyway. And uh, we all know uh, that um, Dom Perrottet and Daniel Andrews and Chris Minns are basically doing it already. So... So I think that will be something. But um, I, I believe uh, there, there might be something more on education. But um, he'll want to pull out a few stops, I imagine, because he's yeah. got to reset. He's got to do a sort of hard reset on the government's agenda, put the Annus Horribilis of 23 and 24 behind him and get out on the front foot again. Holly, look, if we don't get an interest rate cut before May or whenever this election is called, that's going to be a bit of trouble for well, Albanese. It's I mean, clearly what they're hanging out for. Yeah. And it's clearly yeah, that is what they're pinning all of their electoral hopes on, is that there will be a rate cut before we go to the election. Now, what's interesting is that childcare reforms, well, they're already purporting, Joe, that's, that they've already right. <laughs> massively fixed childcare. Right. So I don't know where they're going with that. <laughs> it's already um, Medicare, detail, of course. Medicare, it sounds like they're probably, they just tried to do an NBN scare campaign. Maybe they're starting to get in early for a Medi scare campaign, Mark, too. Uh, how would you know? But again, it's all big spending agenda items. So that's not going to help the Reserve Bank lower interest rates. So it could be you know, they may not get that self-fulfilling prophecy that they want, you know, that there may not be the rate cuts that they're hoping for. Kel, the other interesting thing that I noticed in this um, report was that Albanese has taken yet another swipe at Peter Dutton. He said that his election policies will unite the nation and uh, that Australians are exhausted by negative politicians that fight each other instead of fighting for them. That would be the same guy that hurled the insults at Angus Taylor in <laughs> Parliament this week, saying that he had Tourette's, right? That's right. Mm. Look, uh, he's been using that label for Dutton for a long time. He, every time he stands up in the House, he talks about his negativity. But talking about it doesn't persuade us that Dutton is negative because Dutton comes out with things like, well, I will go nuclear, I will do this, I will, I will actually cut uh, immigration. Uh, whereas we saw these people say they're going to cut immigration and there's still 100,000 over what they said they'd get to. Mm. So uh, him saying negative doesn't, doesn't actually persuade us that, that Dutton is going to be negative. He's got a huge... He's got two problems. He can't go for the small target thing. He did in 2022, played the small target. Yes, 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 I come from the socialist left, but, but trust me, I'm not Scott Morrison and I'm a safe pair of hands. And then on the night he was elected, he said, except that I will implement the entire Uluru Statement in full. So, uh, he, so he can't play the small target. He can, he's got to come out with policies, whether they're about childcare or education or anything else. He's got to have policies. And for an incumbent government, that's the problem of, if it's so good, why aren't you doing it now?
It's the Kamala Harris problem. Yeah, and Evelyn, we'll talk a bit more about the voice in a moment, but he did... <laughs> <Please> bend, <don't. laughs> oh, I'll be coming to you on this one, Joe, and oh, reminding everyone... Honey, it's coming. You the Sit in. But, um, but, Evelyn, uh, it, it is a bit rich that he spent so long, much of his first year as a first-term government, focusing on the referendum, mm. which was heavily divisive, yeah. now criticising others for being divisive and saying that he's going to unite us all. Yeah, I think that, you know, hypocrisy stinks no matter who uh, does it. And unfortunately, I think all all spectrums of politics, unfortunately, in Australia right now is so divided and everybody's sort of being hypocritical, like the whole Albanese and Tourette's thing. Like, I personally, as an Aussie with a sense of humour, like, I wouldn't be offended, but they've made the rules obviously and clearly yeah. so it's like well if you're going to make the rules then it should apply to you across the board but you know he says I think Albanese came out and said that he wants an ambitious second term it's like we well, couldn't even get your first ambitions of of that so <laughs> it is the like 275 dollars the... coming off yeah. all our power yeah. bills yeah, well I that know. was supposed to kick in but it kick is in like the Kamala Harris thing in the mm. US where it's like she's coming out saying um every decision that Biden made over the last four years I had a part to play all the big decisions decisions but I'm going to do things better and then you ask her what are you going to do better and she's mm. and she says these things but then it, it doesn't make any sense and I guess it doesn't make sense in this context either because he's been in power what has he actually done and I think at the moment Aussie's just want someone that they can trust and I know it's hard with politicians but I think whoever can come across like they're going to deliver on their promises will likely win. And so. he's broken a few of those. Well, to do much, to do much of of Green Gables, you <laughs> know, Pippi Longstocking, you know, naive and everything. Um, first term governments are already really wobbly. Like they they're, they're always make lots of mistakes. And Trump the question, did pretty good. And the question is that John Howard said, well, he didn't get elected to a second term. Mm. So, but, um, but as John Howard says, you know, they say about John Howard, I should say, he made every mistake under the sun, but he only ever made it once. And my what reassures me about Albo and this government is that it has made a lot of mistakes, but it has not yet repeated any of them. So it is learning from them. But so only Hopefully. one referendum. That's right. We're not going to have another referendum. Uh, okay. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, only one figure uh, on energy rebate. I right. think it's, it's too it's early to make that call. He, he made the Andrew Giles... Uh, appointment, that was a big mistake. He didn't take him out of the ministry. He gave him another ministry to stuff he up. Did, he he did does make the same mistake well, twice. He got, him out of the, he got him out of the ministry that he stuffed up. So. He's to stuff up another one. Mm. So no one he's making the same mistake twice. I've got 100 bucks to anyone who can name the ministry he's in now. <laughs> That's a good point.